Of all the things I did while healing from over 10 years of extreme chronic illness, nature has been a massive part of my healing journey. There have been about 10 significant things that really changed my life and it was the combination of all of those things together that were healing for me that actually brought me to where I am today to just going on a six mile hike you know up some hills and down some hills in the mud and um, chatting with some wonderful ladies and um, you know <sighs> The, I'll go over the top things, like I can't remember them all always as I'm listing them off just off the top of my head, but um, the things that I healed from was, um, that I healed myself with was brain retraining, breath work, cold therapy, yoga and kundalini, um, mold remediation, NAET treatments, which is an acupuncture treatment for allergies and sensitivities, um, different types of energy work, and um, I know there's there's more. Um, like sometimes uh, when I'm trying to just think of them all off the top of my head, I can't put them all together. But nature has been a huge, huge, huge part of it all. So just thinking about it this way. You know, we are animals that are meant to be outside. So when we are in the trees and, you know, around all this beautiful stuff, um, they all have oils in them, which at different times of the year um, they produce. And then we inhale those um, and they actually tell our body to do different things hormonally, chemically. Um, and we also have pollen, which does a similar thing. It, um, it can also cause seasonal allergies, but um, it's it, these different sounds, different birds that come through different times of the year or different times of the day, they signal um, our body to do specific things at specific times. And actually there have been studies about um, bird sounds um, and how important that is to human function and um, like our circadian rhythms. So that was really interesting. I'm sure you can find some stuff about that. The uh, temperature outside and how we go through the seasonal changes versus being in a controlled climate and, you know, having air conditioning and heating kind of usually most people keep it around like 70 degrees in the United States for for most of the year and we get in a car and we have that temperate climate. We go to our workspace and we have that climate. We go to back home and have that climate and we can control a lot of that um, and this is very very recent in history that we've had that option to be able to just push a button on our wall and have air conditioning um, and even even propane heaters in the houses um, that are like so efficient now that they really do heat up the house and keep it at the temperature that we set it to um, this is only in you know less than a hundred years that air conditioning has really been a thing um, and um, so we are very fortunate that we can utilize those things, you know, when we need to. I went through extreme heat sensitivity and if it was above 80 degrees, I was starting to swell and have a lot of things going on. So, um, it's great to have them and, you know, when we could use, when we want to use them, we need to use them. Um, but we also, I think, have kind of, we start to dysregulate from having such a disconnect from our natural surroundings. Something that always sticks in my mind is um, Alaskan bush people. I, I watched a lot of them through the years of um, going through my my different illness, my experiences, because um, I just loved seeing the nature and the outside and um, it was fascinating what they were doing. And they actually had an episode where they did a behind the scenes where they were showing the cameraman um wearing like huge like thick layered jackets with beanies and you know waterproof boots and gloves and even like face masks because it's so cold outside and there you don't see this on the show but they're because you only see who is being filmed not the cameraman being filmed filming the feet the family so the family is like walking through a creek and they're bare hand fishing in the water and 
it's like they're wearing jeans, which jeans are just gonna like hold so much cold and you can get hypothermic really fast from that. But they were out there like consistently and for long, long periods of time in the rain, in the cold, and so it, in the wind, and they were fine. So they had grown up in that climate. They had grown up where they had like thickened their skin. They had um, learned to create a lot of brown fat around their lungs, around their rib cage, so that they um, could could tolerate these lower temperatures um, and built up their vascular system and their strength and everything. But so many of us do not have that opportunity to, I mean, that's like obviously more on the extreme side of things. But if you think about it, like anybody that lived in these regions before we had like the indoor housing that we have now with easy access to heat um we a lot of people worked outside or they had to walk and travel outside in order or in horse and buggy or whatever it was you know to get to where they were going and now we have this very sterile enclosed environment where we can control everything even to the point where people will and especially with light sensitivity, I did this too, close their windows and um, shut out the light from inside. So the circadian rhythms like do not see the sun rising and the sun setting so that it gets those different light tones at the morning and night to signal our body in the morning when that blue light first comes up. It signals our body to start producing cortisol to wake us up to get us moving. And then at night, that nice pink beautiful sunset actually triggers um, right here our melatonin and so we start producing that melatonin uh, to like make us sleepy at night to calm our system down, calm our nervous system down. But when we are in a building at those times of the days without windows or we have our windows covered or we're looking at our devices with the blue light on it, we do not get that signal for us to um, start winding down for the night, to start to go into sleep mode. So there's so, so, so many aspects of just being out here that um, we do not experience when we are in inside in some capacity and um, I like just kept wanting to be by green I kept wanting to be by water I kept wanting to be by big trees um, and that was super super important to me and I kept feeling that call and so I had made a vision board um, and I had it on my wall for over two years in my bathroom and this was where I was still um, super, super light sensitive, sound sensitive, reacting to all the foods and, um, you know, really, really in a, in a rough place. And I made this vision board and I was like, I want to be out in nature. I want to be out to doing these things and being surrounded by this beauty and get back to that part of my human root there. And so sure enough, uh, I think it was two and a half years after I made that, I ended up moving to Tahoe and becoming a whitewater raft guide. So things can happen rapidly. They can take a really long time. They can feel like they are taking forever to get to a certain point. Um, and then when I moved there, I was still still like shifting and my cells were shifting my chemistry was shifting I was still um not eating my full spectrum of food that now I can eat whatever I want um there was still a lot of brain retraining going on but it was all life action oriented brain retraining so when we get to, um, you know, when we start brain retraining, we start learning our visualizations and our futurizations and doing our rounds and like having little tiny increments of training zone coming in once we kind of uh, figure out what that is for ourselves. But then it's now whew, like now we're in next level. It's life. And so now it's how do we actually really apply all these techniques in life? And I had this extreme awesome opportunity to apply that as I learned to become a white rider rough guide and move to a place that I'd never been in living, you know, without running water and uh, basically camping all the time. And it was like not something I was familiar with, which I really credit to my healing itself. Um, but being grounded in the trees and being on the water 
every day and being immersed in the mountains and other people who were immersed in that was like so incredibly healing. And now that I've been back in the city um, for this past like year and a half now, I have like definitely noticed my body like has changed and um, that it's affecting me. And I know I'm supposed to be here for now. There are things, there are things that I'm being called to be here for, but I'm also very much being called to being back uh, in the big nature. So I'm very fortunate that I live in a place where this is so close to me. This is 40 minutes from me. I can be in the massive redwood trees here with a beautiful, and if you can see it here actually, there's a little creek running through here. So I'm very fortunate to have that, but even if we can't get out to this, you know, on a regular, especially daily basis, that's okay. There's like ways that I was doing this with, like when I was still having trouble traveling in the car and I was still going through all these sensitivities and everything. And I was still able to find ways to go outside and get my feet in the grass and feel the sun on my face, feel the wind, feel that activation from the nature outside. So it's possible and it's accessible to do it at home. Just listening to a little fountain of running water. You can get something on Amazon and just hear that little trickle of water that alone soothes or you can play a water video from your phone um, there's there's lots of options to incorporate nature easily even just getting pictures of nature like I saw that vision board every day with all those pictures of nature and trees and water and that made me happy I felt grounded in that so um, there are ways to incorporate it watching movies watching alaskan bush people um those things like were really really important for me um to calm my nervous system down and release just seeing green and seeing water our eyes actually um it, it tells when our eyes see that our brain chemistry changes so um that alone can make a big difference um yeah it so so important to connect like this is talk about natural healing talk about holistic healing like being in, outside in nature whatever that means however small that is to start with sitting in a chair on the porch um, in the park whatever that is um, can be massive or just opening up a window getting that fresh air and maybe some sunlight in the room um, which can feel super overstimulating if you're very sensory processing <laughs> things going on which I've experienced that I understand um, there's all different levels to allowing ourselves to experience the beauty of nature and getting to ground down so yeah uh, comment below if there's a way that you like to connect with nature if something's worked for you through brain retraining even though you've had sensory processing or various different things going on or activities you like to do do you like to hike do you like to be in snow sports water sports like what is it that that like grounds you down what's like meditation and nature for you what is healing for you in nature um if you have more questions or like to connect with me please leave a comment down below i'd love to hear from you and also give this a thumbs up so we can get this video out to more people if you think it would be helpful for them i really appreciate that that really does help get this out to people all right well i will see you in the next video